Alright, my name is Russell Holly, and I'm doing a little bit today on the Google Nexus One with the uh, Cyanogen mod and uh, the latest in uh, theming from uh, JGoss. Um, primarily reason I'm doing this is I've got a couple of friends and a couple of family members who have Android and you know helping them decide whether or not moving to Cyanogen is really for them um, so I'm just gonna do a beginning to end you know, video on why I think it's, you know, beneficial, why I think it's just really awesome that this community exists and the, uh, just the level of contribution this far has really kind of, uh, you know, inspired me to do some stuff that hopefully I'll be putting videos up in the not so distant future. So here I go. I'm going to start here, uh, from boot all the way up. And this is just the, uh, the unlocked, uh, Nexus one symbol. And it'll move on here to the uh, to the boot sequence here in a second with the uh, custom cyanogen boot sequence for Nexus One. Okay. Now, a lot of what you're going to see here in this video is primarily going to be theming from uh, Jagos and uh, and the contributors that helped him out um, through the through the blue theme. The first thing you're going to notice is that the uh, the live wallpaper has changed rather significantly. You can see the uh, it's got that kind of classic Nexus um, screen, but the colors are definitely different. The uh, there's a there's an image in the background through the through the black and the blue there, which I think is really you know kind of incredible looking. It definitely you know takes your eyes into the image, and uh, through uh, through some of the modifications that were done by Jagos and uh, and another developer Wootroot, um, the touching the screen actually also generates a breathing light pulse, um, which I thought was pretty incredible as well. Um, you've got. You know, your pretty basic, uh, you know, sliding is still just as smooth as it is on Nexus One stock, and everything works really well. Um, the other advantage that you get to, you know, this particular version, and it's something that I actually kind of missed from my uh, G1, was when it rotates, I get my screen, and everything works just fine. So, and then you rotate it back, and it redraws, and everything's great. Now the other thing that you're going to notice from the beginning here is uh, my top bar is blue instead of you know the standard color there, and when I draw it down, it's actually see-through instead of the the slate white that it is on the Nexus stock, which is a big uh, a big deal to me. Um, you know, draws back up just as uh, just as quickly um, as it does with any of the others. Uh, zoom in here a little bit here so you can see you know just uh, just taking the color of that top bit a little bit there, and the uh, the battery life indicator is actually an Android and actually shows the percentage um, of the uh, of the battery life that's going down there which is a pretty big deal for a lot of people. Um, you can also take a look at the bottom here some of the colors that you'll see uh, that are different for you know voice and talk uh, that you know they got kind of blue hues to them um, as part of the theming by uh, by Jay Goss and and the contributors there. So the next thing I want to show you guys is the actual uh, application menu which is another thing that I thought was pretty incredible. Since the beginning of Android, there has been four rows uh, and an infinite number of columns for your applications. Um, a couple of the guys here in the community have made things a little different, and uh, we're going to thank KMobs for that. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up here. You're going to see uh, in the portrait view here, we've actually got five. It doesn't affect the speed or the quality of the draw at all. It's really quite fantastic and and you know a big benefit to people who have a lot of apps because it's gonna fit in less space but then we're gonna show some real magic here to, to take away from the Steve Jobs uh, you know colloquialisms here and we're gonna turn to the portrait or to the landscape view and lo and behold we now have seven uh, which again is you know just as smooth it's really kinda fantastic and magical and wonderful and whatever other words he's gonna use during his presentation I think I'm gonna steal them too and we're gonna turn it back and we've got our portrait view still. So, looking at uh, some pretty incredible stuff here. And this, by the way, is a 
is a you know beta version of the cyanogen mod uh, that a lot of this is wrapped into here. Um, this is actually 5.0.6, which will become stable, uh, a stable release here not too long. So we're going to go ahead and just go back, and uh, you know, just one of the other things that I want to show you is uh, some of the settings that are enabled in the cyanogen mod uh, group here. The first thing that I'm going to show you guys is uh, internet tethering. Read it. Okay. Internet tethering is a big deal for me personally. Um, it really, you know, just kind of make things a whole lot easier for me. You can tether from your, you know, normal USB cable. You can tether using your Wi-Fi connection. You can tether using Bluetooth. It's really uh, the world's kind of your oyster as far as that goes, and all three of them work spectacularly. There are a lot of changes from. The uh, the Android Cyanogen release, you know, from uh, from the stock perception, and one of the other big things that is uh, is a big deal to some people is uh, apps to the SD card. What this basically means is that uh, you know, as it says right there, new applications are installed on internal storage. So if you've got an SD card, it'll save it there rather than the internal uh, you know storage space, which allows for storing more applications, which is a pretty big deal for people who fill that space up. Although, personally, I've yet to do it. So maybe I'm just, uh, I'm not as big a user as I think I am in the Android group. But, uh, you know, this it's a big deal to a lot of people. And it, it definitely, definitely helps here. We're going to keep, keep on moving here. A couple of the call settings that have changed here uh, for anyone that's interested in these particular features. Um, vibrating on answer, keeping the screen awake and things like that. Um, again, you know, everything looks and feels pretty similar to the, the normal Nexus system. The next thing that I want to look at, and really the last thing that I'm going to touch on here in this video, is going to be the modifications done to the pulse notification light. You can choose to pulse when the screen is on. You can change the breathing light color. Um, and there's a huge list of the colors that are available. And you just touch, and when you get a notification, uh, from any of your applications, it'll actually, uh, it'll actually set it up. It'll actually blink just like it did on the uh, on the background here. There is one more thing that I wanted to show here is the trackball wake device. There's also a trackball skip for your music player. Um, the trackball wake device is a huge deal to me. I'm going to go ahead and turn the screen off here, and then pressing the trackball, it'll bring it up here without having to use the power button on the bottom. This is, uh, you know, this is also. You know, a pretty advantageous thing for me personally, but I know a lot of people use it here. So, in conclusion, this is uh, uh, the the beta for Cyanogen 5.0.6 with the uh, blue theme done by Jay Goss, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.